Welcome to Wired to Hunt's Whitetail How-Tos, where we provide a step-by-step -step tutorial for one important deer hunting task. This is probably the most important time of year, pre-hunting season, time to get everything tuned and prepped for the fall. I feel like this is where a lot of guys cut corners. They want to get out and start shooting as fast as possible. They just get a setup good enough. And that's a term I hear in bow hunting way too often. Good enough to kill a deer, good enough to kill an animal, good enough to get it in a kill zone. And I come from a tournament archery background. So I have just been forced to understand the way a bow works, understand the way arrows work, get the most performance out of my bow possible. And by doing that, that's transferred into my hunting setup. Every inch of this bow all the way through my arrows my whole setup there are no corners cut I run a 15 inch front bar and a 10 inch back it's pretty big for hunting but I don't sacrifice weight or size for my shot it's so hard to get that opportunity I want to make it count whenever that happens when I'm building arrows I go ahead and get however many arrows I'm gonna build for the fall I get that many broadheads knocks the whole nine yards I'll cut off both ends and I tune that broadhead to this arrow and it never sees a field point. I don't practice with field points. I don't tune with field points because the length of your arrow affects the spine. The longer it is, the weaker the spine. Well, when you screw a broadhead onto your arrow, that adds two and a half inches. If you're tuning with a field point, you've probably got less than a half inch. So you've got two inches of extra arrow, changing the spine, changing the tune. Once that arrow's built, the broadhead goes on it, I tune it, I shoot it through paper. That never sees a fill point again. And one of the reasons I designed this broadhead with a lockdown feature, I can lock the blades down and practice with it, it doesn't dull the blade. If I shoot as small a peep as possible, a lot of guys hunting shoot huge peeps to let light in, but that also lets your pins and housing float around. It's way harder to center in your peep. I just want to barely see my sight housing inside that peep. Still lets plenty of light in, but you're not sacrificing accuracy. If you do a lot of spot and stalk on the ground, I'll put a 10 degree down angle, quick disconnect, so that when my arrow's on here, if I'm spotting and stalking, lay my bow down, and my stabilizer will hit and the point of my arrow doesn't dig in the ground. Always have a detachable quiver system. As soon as I get in my tree stand, I pop my quiver off, hang it up. The problem is the balance of a bow is so important and every arrow you take out of that quiver, you are taking weight off the right side of that bow, changing the way it tunes, changing the way it reacts on the shot. I could go on for days about micro tuning your setup, but the point is don't cut corners with your hunting bow. It can be as lethal as any setup in the world and you can be as good as you want to be. If you want more information like this, be sure to tune into the Wired Hunt podcast or the Wired Hunt Foundation's mini series. We've got new deer hunting know-how every week. You can find it wherever you get your podcasts.